Yeah, that's it, Drives me crazy when people get up here and talk and they don't introduce themselves. So I am Scott Barnesworth, I'm the Director of Guidance for the Hartford School District. Thank you all for coming. We are hosted this evening by a number of people, and I'm not going to get into some of that, but there are refreshments and drinks back there. There's a little bit of uh, light refreshments over there. There will be a moment or two that allows you to and invite you to get up and uh, grab a little something if you'd like. Why are we doing this? So we're doing this, we're creating an environment tonight so you are comfortable. People will speak from their heart when they're comfortable. That's what we need tonight, people to speak from their heart. We tell students in school that we know if you have rest and you have breakfast and you have lunch, that you will be able to think. Your brain is thinking and you are able to come up and formulate some solutions. That's why there's food. <laughs> because tonight is about solutions. Tonight is not about um, perhaps some other things. We need your help. Hartford needs your help. In the next 90 minutes, we're looking for ideas. We're looking for your creativity. We're a town of 10,000 people. There is no way that a Rotary Club, a church group, a staff at a high school, an agency, a group of people can formulate all of the answers for a community of 10,000 people. Tonight was specifically designed to put out a blanket invitation to oodles of people, but also to try to capture some people specifically. You're not going to have time tonight to be introduced to everyone around here, but I encourage you to learn what's behind the name tag. I'm a grandparent. I'm an uncle. I'm an aunt. I'm a this. I'm a that because that's what makes up our Hartford. We're a little late in starting because we have such a great group. I'm gonna turn this over in a moment to um, other folks because tonight is about everybody's voices. Tonight is not a forum in which you are getting this. Tonight is a kind of activity night in which we are all have a voice. Those of us at our tables are gonna try and capture your voices and in terms of capturing voices, we also have uh, our man Ethan is volunteered tonight, one of our students at our school, to do the video, um, which may get on CATV and may go on our website. Um, the key is we don't want that to hamper a conversation. So he's going to do some of the intro, some of the wrap up, some of the report out. Um, if he can, he'll, he may do some other things. We want him at a table. Why? Because he's a youth in our community. We're going to let the, let the camera do its thing. Okay? Um, I'm going to stop. I'm going to introduce Greg Norman from uh, Heal and the Community Outreach, and he's got a fancy title. I don't know what it is, but uh, <laughs> Greg has enabled us to do a lot of gathering here tonight, and there's some other people that you need to know, and I'll let Greg do a little bit of that. Um, thank you, Greg. Thanks, Scott. Um, I don't have as big of a voice as Scott does, so just if, if I'm too low, raise your hands up. Um, first of all, I just want to say I'm really impressed with the number of people who are here tonight. Um, I, I have been told repeatedly that, um, and experienced repeatedly, trying to host community meetings where nobody comes. Um, so uh, watching the line out the door a few minutes ago was just, wow, it's really impressive. And it speaks to um, the belief that everybody in this room has about the value of community and the value of communicating with other people in the community and make things happen. So the Hartford Community Coalition um, like Scott said, started 18 months ago or so uh, after a couple of um, suicide deaths in this community. Um, so you'd say it went through a period of time when um, there was a crisis and a group of people came together to really focus on how to recover from that crisis. As it's moved into its current state, uh, the intention is to really begin saying, how do we begin building um, a community that supports healthy and resilient people? Um, so, that said, I want to acknowledge that there have been some tragedies in this community in the last couple of weeks and some deaths that were avoidable. And many of you may be here in part because you've read about them, you've experienced them, or been close to people who've experienced them. Um, and I'll just echo what Scott said, that in the conversation tonight, we don't want to avoid that discussion. We want to acknowledge that there are challenges and problems and things that need to be changed or could be better. Um, but my encouragement to you is not to be dwelling in the problem, but to begin moving the community towards solutions. And I'll just say for a moment that I, 
I've been a part of community work and prevention work and all kinds of sort of community engaged strategies for many, many years in many, many communities. Um, and frequently people start by thinking about who are the experts or who are the, um, the, the, the paid resources in the community, who are the doctors, who are the lawyers, who are the police, who are, and I think one of the things I'd encourage us to do is to shift that thinking a little bit and begin taking back responsibility for communities as everybody's job. So in this room, there are people who are human services professionals, there are people who are educators, there are people who are police, all of whom are vital parts of the community. But I think for too long, we've underestimated the value of everyone in a community. And that, uh, in my experience, the best ideas and the greatest community changes are when one person has a good idea and we talk to somebody else about it, and they agree that it's a good idea, and we talk to a couple of other people about it, and then they invite in a few people who may not, they may not know so well, but who think it's a good idea. And everybody rolls up their sleeves and says, I think it's done. And with a lot of things, a lot of small changes, big changes happen. That uh, if you look at things that are challenges in this community, there's probably no one solution. It's going to take 100, 200, 300 small changes to be able to shift that balance, to be able to get to that point where we look and say, this is the community we want to be in. This is the community that we want. Uh, to help support our youth and families and, um, and older adults to be able to live the kind of lives that they should be. Um, so that's the framing for tonight. Uh, here's what we're going to do, and, and I'll be honest that we didn't think there would be this many people. So uh, the discussions we planned are going to be really interesting. <laughs> Hard to figure out how to manage people in space. Um, but roughly what we're going to do is we have four groupings of topics that, that you'll be invited to speak to. Um, and we'll do it in either two rounds or three rounds. Um, so uh, what I mean by that is that we'll have a period of time where everybody self-selects and goes to sort of the topic that they're interested in. And you'll have a discussion focused on that for 20 or 30 minutes. And then we'll call a break in that. And you can look around and say, I'd also like to go talk about something else. And we'll all get up and shift and move to new tables and, and have another round of discussion where, so, you, so that you have the ability to comment on um, two or more things. The areas that we've talked about focusing on, um, one is the concept of building safe and healthy community environments. And you can interpret that however you see fit. But um, uh, healthy and safe environments may be about um, how we eat, how we play, whether streets are safe, uh, whether people feel uh, comfortable being out walking, uh, where people are scared, things of that nature. Um, another area that we've got set up over in sort of this general area is the concept of our, how do we create a community where it's easy to be active and to have access to food that sustains healthy life. Um, in the corner back here, um, really the question of how do we create a community where we can reduce the harm uh, that's caused by alcohol and marijuana and other substances. Um, and then more up in this area of the room, how do we build a community where it's easy for children and youth and families and, and adults of all ages to have resilient and, uh, what I, I don't know what the terminology would be, mentally healthy lives, resilient lives, um, lives where people can reach their potential. So those are our focus areas, um, and again, you'll have the opportunity to choose one of those areas, and we're either going to do two or three rounds depending on how the discussion goes. Um, there are facilitators at each of the areas, so maybe if our facilitators could stand up so you know who they are. So Scott's back here over on this side, Kristen and Claudia over here with the Healthy Eating Back Living, Scott's over here with the Safe Environments piece. Back to the substance use, we have Kathy and Barbara and uh, Ashley. Huh? Ashley. Ashley, yes. Um, and then in sort of the resilient um, community, we have Dottie and, and, Scott. and Scott. will be. So, um, right, is it, is it our plan? After the two rounds, for instance, we're going to do a record out yes. so people can yes. hear if they didn't join in something. 
Yeah. And here, what's in the reporting out was, we're going to do that at the tail end. That right. includes both. Yeah. Okay. And so the questions that you're going to answer when you go to your tables, there's basically three pieces that we'll ask you to speak to. And we encourage everybody to have some voice relative to one of these questions or all of these questions. First question is, just looking at the topic, when you see it, how does it relate to you and your experience of your community? Um, so everybody has some connection to whatever topic they choose in some way. You have a friend, a family member, yourself, other people who you've seen experience it, something you're proud of or something you're not proud of. Um, second question is if we think about our community and what causes um, those challenges, what are some of the reasons that it's a challenge here? What are some of the, the things that contribute to it being a problem in our community? And third, and I think this may be you know, is, is certainly where you want to spend more than half of your time at each table, is if you look five years into the future and something was significantly different and better relative to that topic, what would have changed? Like what, just put yourself out in the future and imagine um, in a world where, say, there's less harm from substance use or fewer teens are binge drinking on weekends or, um, uh, whatever your issue is, and you think, well, five years from now, if that were different, if that were significantly better, what would have happened? What would have changed? Would it be um, better communication between people in town? Would it be uh, um, coaching programs, mentoring programs? Would it be what would have happened? What would have been involved in helping to change that? So it's an opportunity to use some imagination, not too much imagination, and keep it practical and keep it small and targeted something that actually could be changed. Um, because these ideas will then uh, be brought back to work groups um, for the community coalition and will become part of that discussion of, are these things that we actually can do? Um, and at the end of the evening, um, so, so the, the freedom to communicate at this meeting is also partnered with the responsibility then to back it up in some way with some effort or some thought. Our hope is that, in some way, everybody in this room will be able to walk out saying, there's something that is on one of these lists or one of these work groups that in some way I can contribute to, whether by attending meetings and doing planning and helping to make things happen, uh, being supportive in your communications, talking it up in town, whatever the case may be, the hope is that by being here, by having this conversation, we begin to put out some ideas, we begin to hold out some opportunities, and we prepare the ground so that um, there can be some active work groups who start to, to take action on some of the things that may be talked about tonight or in the future. So that's the structure for our discussion. And the, the things I would say about the conversations themselves, and encourage you to avoid debating. So this is just sharing ideas and putting ideas on the table. People may have different ideas, and that's OK. We don't need to work it out here. There will be opportunities for that later. Um, one of the challenges, especially when there's been um, a tragedy or a bad situation that's happened, is it's easy to begin engaging in blame. Um, and I'd encourage us tonight to just uh, limit the amount of blaming and really begin to focus on what are our opportunities for change. Um, uh, one of the challenges with, with trying to find a uh, sort of fault is that um, we can begin to sort of separate ourselves and tear ourselves apart. And I really do think that um, the strength of communities is in um, coming together around ideas that work rather than spending too much time going after why things aren't working. Um, so that's your guidance. So uh, why don't we begin to move? And I'm. Right, should I just add? So when we get into yeah. groups of facilitators, um, talk about the parking lot and how we're going to use those, and then don't forget to sign a sheet on right. the table and make sure the people that are going to <laughs> Yes, so, thank you. You're welcome. So two extra things you'll see. So there are a lot of people here who may not feel like you have the opportunity to say everything you need to say. Um, you'll notice that around many of the tables and in the areas that you go to, there will be um, sticky notes, pads, and pens. So if you find yourself at the end of the conversation feeling like you've had something to contribute that you haven't been able to, have something else to say, a piece of information you want to share to the mix, um, grab a pen, write as many sticky notes as you want, and then you'll see around the walls, there are things called parking lots. You can just add them to the parking lots. Those will get added to the sort of the notes and the, the output of this meeting. Um, and 
Yes. Yes. When, when you're in your groups, you'll see some kind of a sheet sitting there that says, do you want to work on this in the future? So um, if you see it as an area where you'd like to contribute or be a part of the solutions in the future, make sure you get your name down and, and so we know to contact you later. Question? Um, I had a question about the time frame and how much time. Is someone going to like ring a bell or? Yeah. So um, I think what uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have either 20 minutes or 30 minutes per discussion group. I'll look around and sort of see how discussions are going. If it seems like they're coming short at 20 minutes, we'll uh, ring a bell a few minutes beforehand and move people. If it seems like people are really engaged in conversation, we'll let it go for 30 minutes and call time then. Yeah. Um, so the most challenging part of this is going to be figuring out who goes where and how to get everybody communicating. So, for those of you who'd like to start communicating about healthy and safe environments, why don't we move over this direction? For those who want to think about healthy and active living, move back to this corner. Uh, One of the facilitators, if you can pick out three things, it doesn't have to be the most important things, but three practical things that people have identified that may be opportunities for change, we'll report on that. I'm going to just give you a couple of reminders and also the instructions for as you're heading out the door. Um, as I listened in on very side stream on a lot of these conversations, um, it was really clear a couple of things. One, particularly with the substance use issues that, that there are a lot of heavy hearts and anger in this community right now relative to substance use. So there's a significant amount of discussion and dialogue that we need to have to continue relative to that topic. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that. So, okay, yeah, thank you. Maybe we could shut the Yeah. So just to, just to say, what I was saying is that clearly from listening in to the two substance use conversations that uh, there are, there's a lot cooking right now, um, and a lot of people who have very strong, um, a, I'd say both a deep well of sadness and frustration relative to substance use in this community. That's a dialogue that needs to continue, and we need to um, probably have sort of a deeper dive on that at another point in time. Um, just a couple of other thoughts. Just a reminder that on most of the tables, or if you wander around, you will find sticky notes. So if there are things that you weren't able to talk about in your group, or if the noise was just too loud, or you have something you want to add before you leave, you can write a concept on a sticky, sticky note and put them up on the wall um, before you go. Um, and then the final instructions as you're going out the door. This is intended to be a starting point and not a, a conversation that comes to resolution tonight. So hopefully we've had an opportunity for people to begin talking. Um, it's not an opportunity for people to complete those conversations or to come to complete solutions. Um, we will be forming work groups as we walk out of, um, as the, the community coalition continues. So there, there are and were uh, papers around the table uh, that you could sign up on to say that you would like to be part of an ongoing solution in the community. Make certain if you uh, feel like you want to be a part of that, that you've got your name down somewhere or you talk to one of um, the folks near the doors, you go out, so we record that. Um, what else? Um, oh, 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 yes, 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 thank you. And last but not least, as you're headed out the door, there are four logos up on the wall, and uh, your final opportunity tonight, after we talk about the, the brief solutions, is to vote on what uh, logo you would prefer to see on communications relative to the Hartford Community Coalition. So we've got a number of options. Um, you can bring a marker or a pen from your table and just put a check mark or an X to represent your vote. And um, we'll take these down tonight and whichever ones the majority of the people in the room prefer to see as a logo for this community coalition going forward, we'll use. So it's a good thing you're here and good thing that you stayed to the end because your vote will count. <laughs> so let's start over here and just three, three quick things. Hey, 
I, we thought we were going to be talking about things like green space and well-lit sidewalks, and we did some of that, but mostly people wanted to talk about including uh, opportunities that, that were inclusive of all the people in the community, breaking down barriers, doing things in a multi-generational way, um, making sure that, let's see, uh, making sure that the space that we did use was um, a safe place, like using schools for public activities. Someone suggested space like the VA, which is underutilized. Um, we talked about building awareness of our natural environment through better hiking trails, more hiking trails, more out open space. And we talked about multi-generational neighborhood gatherings. What else, Scott? Oh, a big, big thing we talked about was um, expanding um, bystander awareness in our community, um, which as, as we were talking, we are talking about it in terms of violence and bullying, but it also uh, expands into suicide prevention and it can expand into substance misuse prevention. So uh, that was one of the first things we talked about that was um, a really valuable conversation. We talked a lot about the... Um, no. <laughs> All right, so healthy eating, active living, uh, shared use assets in the community, separated paths, tracks, playgrounds. Um, secondly, multi-generational voice. So the bystanders who know how to can and they know how to cook, that they would have a venue to teach others um, to do that. And then lastly, affordable, fresh, local food. A resounding um, need for a coping skills for youth to teach youth at a very young age how to deal with things like anxiety and depression so they don't turn to substances for self-soothing. Um, there was also a lot of voice around activities for children to do from a very young age all the way through high school that were accessible, meaning that it didn't cost for you to use gyms and those kind of things, and also so there were hours that were that the um, these public locations were open, there was programming that was done, and there was transportation um, provided when needed as well. And then the other one was to have open communication to create a culture where it would be acceptable and even welcomed to have other parents and youth communicate within the community if they were concerned about someone. So someone could call or text me and say, Barbara, I saw your son or your daughter doing X, Y, Z mm -hmm. on the corner, and then I would accept, you know, take that in an open manner and deal with that when in, within my home. So creating that sort of safe environment with our community where you could have that communication between the parents and the youth. One of the things that I would hope in the future is that uh, we communicate clearly the value of parents having communications with kids about substances. And I, I think for most of you, you could pick up the packet at the door. There's some interesting data in there about um, the, the number of youth who turn to substances at an early age, uh, either, and the fact that far fewer do if they've had significant communications and conversations with their parents about substances compared to those who do. And I think, you know, Substance use is a hugely complicated challenge, but um, I think at some levels it's important for us to keep going back to fundamentals of the more we communicate, the more we empower um, parents and other members of our community to talk clearly and openly and establish some standards um, and beliefs about um, what's important in the families, the more we can create a uh, community that's protected. So, mental health and wellness? Um, mental health and wellness, one thing that came out from this group is that pretty much all of us suffer from some sort, whether it's depression or eating disorders or substance abuse. And one big thing that, that people really seem to think is we need to get rid of the stigma. That it's okay to have these issues and that people don't need to deal with it alone or not deal with it because that's what's happening. Um, so ways we can do that, um, they talked about having consistent um, education from the time a child enters kindergarten at one of our schools and goes right straight up through their senior year of high school because it, it will teach them different coping skills at different <coughs> ages. Um, and it will make it easier for a young child who may not know that things are wrong at home, but if they're receiving education, they're going to see that things are wrong because that's their normal and, and unless they're educated about it they're not going to understand that it isn't normal um, we talked about having
programs that weren't necessarily traditional, just sit in front of your counselor and talk, but have peer groups that are led by um, people who have been successful in their recovery, um, whether, you know, whatever the addiction is or the depression, um, do things like art therapy, meditation, um, which also then leads to healthy living. Um, and insurance and cost was another big thing um, that people would like to see in five years if that does not prohibit people <coughs> from getting help. I think that's great. So, <clears throat> could I, you, you had a moment, can I have a moment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, a couple of, a couple of things really, I know, because Greg's going to, I'm going to do, Greg's going to the last word. Uh, Lisa McDonald has been um, had, helping us in the town of Hartford via Greg's office to get HCC off the ground, X amount of hours per week and so forth. So much of tonight and much of the effort has been Lisa and Greg's team helping Hartford to, to get this kickoff to where we are. So thank you to <laughs> Clearly, thank you to the Hotel Coolidge and Dave Briggs, and of course, you know, we're kind of beaming at the seams here, it's, it's what we do, but I appreciate all of David and the staff, um, all that you all did this evening for this. Um, I'm not going to point out particularly um, other individuals, but I want to just tell you a couple things. Don't forget about these things, because HCC is here to stay. HCC is going to be who you are. It could be your initials. Seriously. Because this is you. We didn't, there wasn't a board, a people, a company that said, you're going to have this logo and you're going to do this. It's a reason we did tonight, to hear your voices. So Ethan, by the way, Ethan, thank you for your video expertise. <laughs> Ethan is also going to count for each of these. He's going to try and so forth and, and all of that. And uh, as Greg said, this is going to go in some thing that goes somewhere. I am so proud of you guys because of this. I'm just looking, right? So where do we go from here? What do we do? These sheets of the subgroups have eight or ten or fifteen people on them, and I've only got two in my hands. This means that you care and you want to do more, and you know that this is not a one-night solution. And you're going to talk to your friends and you're going to say, "Well, okay, now what?" Part of what we talked about as a board from HCC is, in fact, um, doing uh, like four of these a year, just so everyone leaves here with a kind of a synopsis. So tonight is October the 21st. Maybe the next one of these meetings is going to be January something, and then. April something. But in the meantime, the subcommittees work. Subcommittees come up with what's, what's, what's going to work. We're working with Greg and, and the team and Lisa in terms of grant funding and what do we need, but they're going to hear from the subcommittees. We heard a lot tonight about mental health first aid. We've already got some contacts and people in this room that can help do that for kids and for adults. Youth mental health first aid, kids helping kids. Connect training so we can get an eye on how to uh, better get a sense of uh, folks who uh, may be suicidal. Gateway training for that. It's available to each of you. And if each of you brought two or three friends, can you imagine the impact we can have in the Hartford community in very little time? That's what we're talking about. We're, I sound like a politician, sorry. We're talking about giving you and empowering you and giving you the tools so that we can help someone else and give them the tools. Right. So that's that little bit. Okay, sorry, I think I'm done. Ooh, thanks, God. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Sarah. Uh, I am a mother of a five year old. I am also an addict. And uh, I've been in recovery for over two years. I know a couple of you people have heard from me, a couple of you people haven't. Um, I am with a group of people that are putting together an addictions awareness walk. Uh, has nothing to do with raising money, has everything to do with raising awareness of who to, who to go to, who to talk to. Um, I need the whole community, as in like the whole upper valley, whether it's in the New Hampshire side, on the Vermont side, to come together and put together an awareness walk to show some pride. Um, and that, because I'm very proud that I'm an addict, I'm very proud that I'm in recovery. Um, and I think that we talked about stigmas a lot and it would kind of just alleviate the, the stigma of being this person that's associated with drugs, being a family, family member of a person that's associated with drugs. Um, so we're in the planning process of it. I do have a couple of organizations on board with me. I have a Facebook event page 
that is an addictions awareness walk page. Um, I do, I'm gonna get the email list so that I can send out personal emails as well. But I encourage you, if you do have a Facebook account, to please get onto that event and show some willingness to help. Um, every little bit helps. So I just wanted to make a kind of a full, wide announcement um, about this walk that I feel very passionate about. I already have about 90 people on board for it, so um, I'd really like to see some more help. Thanks. So, honestly, for anybody who um, uh, is looking for resources, so uh, if you came to this meeting wondering if there were going to be opportunities for understanding what sort of services or treatment resources, there is a table in the back that there are a number of um, uh, community organizations, listings of places where people can receive services or get <coughs> services. Please make certain if that's what you want that you find your way back there and look at what's available to you. Um, again, as you're heading out the door, mark up our logos. Um, if you want to sign up and haven't signed up yet for a, for a working group, do so. And I just want to say it is, um, it's a really cool thing to um, organize a meeting like this and have the biggest problem be that it's so hard to hear people because there's so many people here. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, it's a wonderful, wonderful problem to have. Um, next time we'll try to have a bigger room. Um, and I, I just, I'm so grateful for everybody coming. It demonstrates your caring for your community, and that's the place where good things start. So, on uh, your way out the door. And yes, great day round of applause. What do you do?